Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I just want to, before I even start, say thanks to the Digital Overdose um, team for providing a platform for us to have talks like this and yeah, for me to be able to, um, to share my experience, my first uh, physical, ex uh, physical assessment experience as a red teamer. So just a quick agenda, what I would like to go through, like a quick overview um, is I'm going to quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I don't, I won't waffle on about that too much. I'll go into what the assignment was actually. Um, then I'll explain the, the phishing and the vishing that we, that we performed on the client, the recon that I did of the premises, how I eventually gained access there, and then just a couple of mistakes and lessons. So mistake from my side and from the client side, and then obviously lessons from both sides as well. So just a, a little quick run through of who I am. I obtained my first PC when I was um, eight years old. From there, I learned I think QBasic at, uh, when I was 11 year, years old. The first, you know, so my first unofficial hack, if I can call it that, and I call it unofficial because there wasn't really permission granted or I call it a, um, uh, unofficial, unexpected penetration test, which resulted in me um, taking over ISP, basically. I was young, I was 13 at that age, so I mean, um, I'm sure I won't get into trouble for mentioning that. Then due to my interest in computers that I carried on, I started the IT business at the ages of 17. From there, I carried on with the business, obtained my computer science degree, at, and then at some stage, my IT business um, transformed into a software development house. Um, and then recently I got into CTF with the, with the Hack South crew. Um, check them out on Discord. They're quite a nice bunch of guys. And then I eventually got into my first official penetration testing job. So currently I'm employed as a penetration tester slash red teamer at Checkmark Cyber. I've over the last year and a half gone through a bit of a spate of obtaining certifications through offensive security. So I've gone, got my OSCP, OSEP, OSWE, OSEP, OSC3. Then I've also done the PN, PNPT from TCM Security and also recently faces from Pentest Academy. If you're looking for me anywhere, um, Chris Meister, basically on all of the social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. I'm always open, ping me um, if you want to discuss anything. Um, I like, I love discussing um, hacking stuff with anybody. And then I've got a blog running chrismeister.github.io and you'll actually find this whole talk on there as well that I wrote down as a, a blog post. A quick disclaimer, I'm relatively new in the official hacking scene. Um, so I've, I've been a hacker all my life, but officially, only for a year and a bit now. So what I might be saying might come across wrong. Please, I'm open to corrections anytime that anybody has corrections or suggestions. And whatever I say, go go and research, do your own research before you just accept what, what I say. Okay, so getting into the actual talk. So the assignment that we got was a full black box um, penetration test for the company. Basically, what that meant is they gave us the company name and said, go and test the security, see, see what we can do. So our, our goal, oh, well, first of all, I was quite excited for this. I mean, it took about, what, four to five months for this to actually materialize from hearing about it the first time. So I was quite excited when it eventually came because in our country, I'm from South Africa, there isn't a lot of opportunity for for tests like this, um, just based on the fact that it costs a lot. And I've actually spoken to a lot of penetration testers after the fact, um, when I started sharing my story, and a lot of people are actually scared to go and attempt doing these things, just based on the, um, the our security guards and with the crime rate in the country, which is probably not, which is probably on par, par with the rest of the world. I just think maybe our security guards are a bit trigger happy here. So people are very, um, wary of, of attempting physical assessments. But anyway, I was excited for it. So our goal was that we, or we had a feeling in the team that we would gain full domain um, 
control if we could just get access into the internal network. And we base this on the fact that they haven't done a, even a white box te test, internal test before. So we knew there would probably be a lot of um, opportunities for us to be able to escalate our privileges once we got onto the internal domain. So the goal was domain admin. And in my mind, I wouldn't, wouldn't accept anything less. So then, so then, yeah, the, the start of it, we started performing OSINT on the company. Um, that meant going onto Twitter, going onto LinkedIn, finding employees of the company, starting to build email, um, email address lists and, and employee lists, um, trying to find the interests and all that, just so that we had a base of uh, things that we can attack if we wanted to, uh, for example, do phishing or vishing, which we ended off doing anyway, but we didn't need to do like a spear attack. It was quite a broad, broad attack that we had. Um, eventually did. So anyway, then we found all the external facing infrastructure, did enumeration on it, find, found open ports, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we were looking for like low hanging fruit initially. Um, I must say, I commend this company, they are quite well secured in terms of the external stuff. Besides uh, one web application that I found a vulnerability in that allowed me to purchase um, airtime for a SIM card and data without actually paying for it. So I was able to basically cost them money by just loading vouchers onto my own SIM card, um, which, which comes into play a bit later. So besides for that, we were quite happy that the, the internal infrastructure, uh, sorry, the external facing was quite good. So then we decided, okay, we now need to to find a way to find credentials if we can't get get through a vulnerability on the external side. So we decided to do some phishing first and then vishing after that. The phishing, uh, we we had about 40 email addresses from our OSINT. So I went through my normal procedure of what I do to set up a phishing campaign. We got everything set up. I hit the same button and not absolutely nothing happened. There wasn't a click. And not, absolutely nothing came through. So I just left it for a couple of days, carried on with some of the external testing, and then I decided to just go back and look at the logs. And lo and behold, the, at the exact time that I clicked to send out the phishing, there was actually a, a problem with the mail server. So none of those emails went out. So that at least gave me a, a little bit of hope. And we sent through a second, second phase of the phishing attack. And through that, um, I was actually able to get a one credential out of the people, um, which was in it's it's normally enough. Um, we normally have a better strike rate, but anyway, so we got this credential. I logged into the email. The first thing I started looking for was VPN details, which I found, but unfortunately, they had two form uh, two two form factor um, available. Uh, activated on this account. So I couldn't I couldn't log in without that um, two-form authentication um, pin code that would be sent to their cell phone. So I sort of gave up on that idea. I found a lot of usernames and passwords that would be connected to external services that they make use of, which we didn't touch because that was obviously not within the scope. Then I also noticed that the IT department um, detected our phishing attack because they sent out the email to the whole company and say there's a phishing attack happening. If you if you clicked on the link, provided your credentials, contact the IT department so that your password can get reset. So I just quickly deleted it out of this user's email box so they weren't aware that something had happened. And thank goodness for that because I could, until the end of the engagement, these credentials um, stayed active and I could use them and I actually used them eventually to, to do a, uh, the, the final takeover of the domain. Then, okay, so with the phishing being a success for, for us, we decided to go on to the vishing. But be, that's basically doing phishing through the, um, using telephones. Uh, so you would phone up the people, try and get them to, to give you some sensitive info. This was the very first time that I've had to do something like this. So I struggled for a couple of days to just like wrap my head around, okay, what is the end goal going to be when you do this machine? What do I need from them? Eventually, I decided, okay, you know what? I can't wait any longer. So I decided to just start phoning up the, the branches of the company and sort of just see what happens. 
to add insult to injury, I made use of the SIM, the vouchers for the SIM card that I actually was able to pull off their site that I didn't pay for, and I used that to to phone them. So we were making use of their own infra, not infrastructure, their own money, if I can call it that, to to phone them and reach them. So my first attempt at that, I phoned up, said, listen, I'm ex from head office IT. I just need to speak to someone about the computers. Um, we've seen that the antivirus isn't updating. and We're just worried that something is going to happen and you're going to lose all your data. So we're trying to prevent that. Um, and the, the first lady that I spoke to, she was quite happy to give me anything that I need from her. I got passwords from her. I was able to get it to run commands on the PC because I, need, I was trying to do recon to see are the computers connected to the internet, which they weren't. Um, but based on the proxy message that was coming up, I thought maybe it was just a proxy setting that would need to be set up because I need to, needed to gain info on what I could expect when I actually gained access, physical access to the, to the offices. And uh, from, from the discussion with her and a couple of other stores that I phoned with a sort of similar script, I was able to determine that they had a, a password pattern, if I can call it that. So they would, so I would easily be able to guess if someone gave me a username, I would be able to sort of figure out what the password would be. And it turned out the administrator passwords had the same pattern. Um, just a side note on that, I actually still feel quite bad about it. The one lady actually had a, a genuine IT problem thinking that I'm from IT. And I told her that there would be someone that comes up, would come out to the premises to come and sort her out. So I do hope that someone did come and sort her out. Otherwise, she still still has an issue there. Um, the commands that I had the people run was typical ping command that would show up an error, and that just let me um, gave me the opportunity to say, okay, listen, something is wrong on your computer. We're gonna send out a local guy to come out because we don't. We obviously can't fly someone down from where we are from head office. So just expect someone, and um, yeah, that gave me the opportunity to to have a, a story of when I actually go go there. So the first time that I decided to go to one of the stores, I just went to go and do some recon just to see what is in the store. I needed to see what type of security they've got, um, how uh, vigilant are they. How do the security, the, the security interact with the clients of the store? How busy is the store? What are the, where are the high value areas, um, the areas with the computers and the servers and that? So I needed to establish all that. And again, I just went to the store open mind, um, pretend that I'm, I'm a, I'm a, one of the shoppers there, got a trolley, walked through the place. So the, the things that I noticed there were like the, the security guard was more interested in checking that the people are wearing masks and sanitizing because it's still in the COVID times. And then he would randomly check people that went out the store. He would actually like search their handbags and whatever backpacks and things that they had. There was CCTV all over. I didn't know if someone was sitting monitoring it. There was a vacant network jack that I found that actually had a power source close by as well. So that provided perfect opportunity for me to to build and test a Dropbox for the first time. Dropbox is just a little computer, and I mean, it's as big as a cell phone that you can plug into the network, have access to, and from there you could basically be connected to the network to, to do enumeration and try and um, compromise the network. So I also found where the offices were. I saw that uh, there's no like physical barrier to enter the offices to get to the server room. So I could see them, see all of that through the corridor leading into the offices. So knowing what I, or having gotten all the info that I needed to, and I've already formulated the exact plan that I was gonna do when I go there, I headed back to the office and started preparing my little tools. So I built a little fire box with um, Kelly on there as a drop box. If you look at my blog um, page, your uh, website, you'll see that I actually wrote quite a detailed article on how I built the box. And um, on Excel, I actually did a talk and explained to you guys how I do it. So um, yeah, have a look there. I'm, I'm happy to also get suggestions if, if guys have any um, comments or suggestions on that for me. So then I also had a, like a USB drive that I loaded up some tools like Minicats, uh, 
built a custom reverse shell that had um, antivirus bypassing in case I could get a PC with an uh, internet connection that I could um, call back to our CPU server and just a bunch of enumeration tools. Just a side note, like if you ever do this, just zip up the the tools with the password because otherwise, as soon as you plug it in there, the pinger or any antivirus is going to pick it up and kill kill your tools and then you sit there with anything, without anything. Then I just had like other random stuff with me as well, USB charging cable. I had another laptop that I had Kelly on that was set up to connect to the Dropbox via Wi-Fi. And I even had Kelly on a, um, a live Kelly on a USB drive in case I could plug in. And then from my old IT business, I still had my company ID badge, which clearly indicated that I'm an IT support person. So I made sure I wore that uh, that day. Uh, funny thing is, um, I was taking my kid to school that morning, having dressed already, and he, even he noticed that oh, something something is different because I'm not he's not used to seeing me in jeans and a button-up shirt and things like that. So, and then I explained to him he's a five-year-old what I'm going to go and do. So uh, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> I was quite interested afterwards when he kept on asking me about it because I explained to him. We're going to go and try and see if we can access the people's bank account. That was the easiest way for me to explain to him. And afterwards, the afternoon he wanted to, when he was he saw that I was sitting in the computer, he wanted to come and sit. He wanted me to show him, okay, how, I, how can I see the people's bank statements, for example? So, yeah, that, it was quite interesting the way that he grasped that. Okay, then, okay, so the first time that I actually went to the store with all my tools and, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this now. I, st I stopped there. I thought I was relatively calm. As I was walking up to the door, like a million things ran through my head that could go wrong. And it's a good time to note that during these assessments, you normally have a what they call a get out of jail free card, which is a letter from the company to say, this guy has permission to do what he does. If he does get caught, don't call the cops. Call this guy. He will confirm the whole story. For reasons that I can't go into now, we didn't have this in place yet, but we were running out of time for the assessment, but we did, we obviously had the permission, we just didn't have that official letter. So I took a bit of a gamble and decided, okay, hopefully I don't end off in the cop shop today. As I got to the security guard, my mind was completely clear and I was relaxed. I just had, I told myself, just, just pretend that you belong here. I went up to him, I greeted him, I explained to him who I was, uh, what I was doing there, and I asked him if he could point me in the direction of the of the officers, which he was happy to do. And I think that uh, that was an important step for me because I want I didn't want the security guard to wonder later on who is this guy, what is he doing. That I I wanted him to know exactly this is why I'm there, and don't even worry about asking me again. So. As I walked to the, the offices, I had another little brainwave. I thought, let me just pretend that I'm on the phone with the IT head office. I, I, and I pretend that I'm speaking to someone. And um, I did it loud enough so that anybody within earshot could hear me. And I just said, listen, okay, I just got here. I'm going to see what's going on. Uh, give me 15, 20 minutes. I'll phone you back now. I'll give you a uh, site report to say what we can do to fix the problem. And that little trick worked because... I hadn't even pretended to put the phone down and a lady came out of her office and said, oh, are you that IT guy that the, the people were going to send? So there, I, I was already in, no one had any suspicion of me. I was walk, I could walk into any of the offices, um, like just the, the random things that caught my attention and people's handbags, cell phones, everything was lying all over. I could have easily, if I were, if I were a malicious person, have caused um, financial damage there as well by stealing stuff. Okay, so anyway, I was part of the furniture there. Um, they let me into the server room. The server room is just a little, <laughs> a little small little room that looked like it's actually supposed to be for like storage of um, cleaning products and things like that. The handle wasn't even a proper handle. It was a, a broken handle. So I could get in there to the server, access everything. I could close the door behind me so I had full privacy to do what I wanted to do. I got uh, my Dropbox out, connected it to the network. That worked perfectly. I could access it from my laptop. I could access it from our, oh, sorry, not yet from the, our C2 server. 
So the first little hurdle that I had to cross there is that there was no DHCP on it. A small hurdle, so I just had to set up a static IP. But then I realized, okay, but there's no in internet. I can't access the internet from that net network sub um, subnet. I tested for proxy servers, couldn't find anything. Uh, so the Dropbox idea wasn't going to work. So I tried the tools, um, Mimikatz didn't want to work because they were running Windows, 2000, Windows Server 2003 and XP. So the version I had was for later versions. Um, so, but bonuses for me is that the, all, the, all the workstations were logged in as admin, local admin users. The server was logged in as an administrator, not locked. So I could see stuff on the server, but even from the server, I couldn't access um, access the internet. So I decided, okay, when an hour had passed, I thought, okay, that was my limit. Let me get out here, go and regroup, see what I can do to, to come back and, and get, get a bit more success. I went back to the office, brainstormed a bit, realized, okay, let me just put a 3G connection on my Dropbox as well. So that would connect the Dropbox directly to the internet, connect to our C2 servers, and let me allow to do everything that I wanted to do initially. So I was quite annoyed with myself for not thinking about that the first time that I went there. Anyway, so I went back. This time when I walked into the, onto the premises, we had cash and transit guys that were busy loading money from the ATM. So that was quite a, a, a little bit of a scare again in seeing these people with guns and all that. So again, I had permission to be there, but for me, the guys like that um, in our country, they get targeted quite often, if not daily. So I, I knew these guys would also be quite sensitive to anybody acting strange around them. So I had to once again tell myself, okay, calm down, walk past them, don't even, don't think about it, just just get, get through it. So yes, I got into the property, no one shot me. I, Went straight to the to, to the manager again. Told her, "Listen, I'm back. I think I've got a, uh, a solution to the problem now." So got back into the server room, connected to Dropbox, tested that the three G is working, all the connections that worked perfectly. Uh, tested it from our C two server. Okay, I thought that was it. I walked and walked out. Got back to our office, connected to the Dropbox. Great, I could still connect to it. Started enumeration and. Basically, the box died with, uh, within a couple of minutes of doing enumeration. And I realized the heat that I felt in that little room that day was affecting the Dropbox and obviously freezing it up. So then I was I was super annoyed. It was hot. I didn't want to go there again. But I just, just decided, okay, listen, uh, they have given me free rain there now. I'm just going to set up a spare laptop that I've got and use that as my Dropbox. Then I won't have for heat issues. I've got a nice, powerful machine there. So set it up. I went there. Again, just told the lady, okay, I'm back. Doing X, Y, Z. Went into the server room, hooked this thing up, and it just tested everything is working. Got back to, the, to our office. I was able to connect and start doing enumeration. Everything was working perfectly. So then I was able to see that the their network is actually connected throughout the country to all the branches. I could access their head office. I could access absolutely everything. So I was able to make use of a Kerberos attack and an old MS-17 exploit to actually just take over the, the whole network there. So that was a success. So just a, a summary of like mistakes. I assumed that there was going to be an internet connection. There wasn't. I built a failover, but the failover just wasn't enough. I didn't take into account the heat, even though I felt it, it should have registered with me. This little device isn't gonna work. And then eventually I just decided to think they get a laptop in there, get a proper computer in, make sure I've got all the connections and everything running. And yeah, that that gave a success at the end of the day. And then just the, the lessons that I learned quickly is, uh, just be prepared for any, every, anything. Try and roll with it. Don't get too upset set with it. And just also just act like you belong at the place. And then just a, a main thing that I can maybe do to, to companies to prevent something like this is the segmentation of the network. Make sure that one computer, one computer on a network that is compromised can't access your, your whole network. And then provide training for, for staff, um, ongoing training about the physical 
through the technical um, experience at their the offices, train them about the fishing, uh, trading, train them about fishing and all that. So yeah, that's that's my talk. Um, thank you guys for listening. If there's any questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask me. I'm always open on social media. Awesome. That was a really fun talk. Uh, someone, someone actually remarked uh, that was kind of funny, you know, uh, when you said, oh, yeah, it was a good engagement because I didn't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> Anytime that you don't get shot during the engagement is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, do you, uh, do, does this often happen that you have, like, a similar consideration? Like, uh, you go somewhere, you're like, I hope I don't get shot today. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, look, we went through a spate of a lot of these cash in transit hijackings taking place in, in our country and locally even. So whenever we at a shopping center and you see these guys walk through, they, it, it does play on your mind. It's, so that's why it was even more prevalent during that engagement for me that I'm sort of doing something illegal here now. And, uh, <laughs> I don't want these guys to be nervous at all. And, with, and I understand why, because they, you know, they're not the, the best paid people, but, and they do quite, <laughs> quite okay. um, effective work. Yeah. Right. Let's see if there's any questions in chat. Um, not that much. Um, right. So wh when you introduced yourself to the security guard, did you introduce yourself as a pen tester, or did you introduce yourself as someone who is here to you know, uh, perform some operations? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe I wasn't too clear on that. Yes, I, my whole persona there was I was an IT support person that head office had subcontracted down to me. So anything that I did, I mean, I had, like I said, my old um, IT support company, I had the badge there that said computer services with my name and everything on there. So, yeah, no, I didn't go in there and say, listen, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm here to hack you. Yeah, <laughs> I, do, uh, I don't think they, they might not have understood if, if I said that I might still have gained access. I don't think it would have raised too many questions. Awesome. Well, uh, I believe that concludes uh, the, yeah, the time for this talk. Uh, someone mentioned in chat that uh, most Americans can relate to not getting shot. Uh, <laughs> As uh, a born and raised American myself, I can tell you that resonated personally with me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, like I said, also, uh, I've been speaking to a couple of other red teamers that uh, after this engagement, like when I started sharing the story, and they are all of the opinion as well that they do not like the physical side of things. And if, if they can, they actually won't do it. And that's, I think that's why there's a lot there isn't a lot of opportunity for, for engagements like this. I mean, I've been with it now for just over a year with this company, and it's the first time that the uh, opportunity like this has arose. And I don't think an opportunity like this will come up very soon. 